What's up guys, in this video, we'll see how we can visualize results from our neural network with charts in our front end web application using the DC and cross filter JavaScript APIs. So let's get to it. In the last couple of videos, we completed the development of the backend Flask web service to host our Keras model as well as the front-end web application to interact with our model and request predictions on images of cats and dogs. Previously, we saw that our model would return predictions to us, and then we display the values of the predictions on the page. In this video, rather than just displaying those raw values, we're going to see how we can visualize those predictions using charts. Data visualization is a big deal in general, so quickly getting an idea for how this might be done in this application can help you kickstart the process of thinking about how you may want to visualize data across other apps going forward. This is what our visualizations will look like. So here we have a row chart and a pie chart, both depicting the predictions for this image. And we can see that if we hover over the graphs, we get the underlying values for each category. All right, so let's get this set up. From the static directory within Flask apps, we now have a new file, predictwithvisuals.html. Go ahead and create the file just as I have here, and we'll be placing all of our JavaScript and HTML for our app inside. Let's jump into the code and see what we've modified from the original application we built last time. Now, actually, most of this code is the exact same as it was in the last video, since the only functionality that we're modifying is rather than displaying the values for the predictions on screen with text after we click the predict button, we're now displaying charts. Let's check out what's new. The first thing is within the head. We're importing a particular style for the charts on our page with the link to this DC CSS file. Then, within the body below the predict button, we now have this div tag that contains two divs, which are just divisions on our HTML document to hold the row chart and the pie chart. Then, for our image element, the element that displays the selected image on the screen, we add this style to it so that it will be displayed underneath the charts rather than next to them. Alright, so that's all that's new in regards to the UI portion. Next, we have three new script tags one that imports D3, one that imports CrossFilter, and one that imports DC. These are all the JavaScript libraries we'll use to create the charts. D3 is a data visualization API. The CrossFilter API provides ways to interact with and explore datasets in the browser. And DC is a higher level API built on top of D3 and CrossFilter. We'll be making use of all three of these libraries when we create and plot our charts. Then, within our handler that specifies what to do once an image is selected from the file selector, rather than clearing the dog and cat prediction text that we were previously displaying on the page, instead we now clear the contents of our divs that hold the charts. And this will remove the charts from the screen before a prediction for a new image is requested. Now, the final changes to the code are for what happens when our predict button is clicked. So, moving inside our event handler for the click event on this button, after we make a post request to our predict endpoint, we're creating this predictions variable and transforming the response from the endpoint in the following way. Remember, the response contains a JSON object called prediction, which contains two key value pairs containing the cat and dog predictions. We need to process this response to get the data in a format that's suitable for CrossFilter to work with. So we create this array of JavaScript objects called predictions and we define each JavaScript object within the array to contain a category and a value. The category will be cat or dog, and the value will be the prediction for the corresponding category. These categories and values are extracted from the response we got from our endpoint. So this predictions array is the data set we'll be working with to plot our charts. And if you're not quite able to visualize the transformation from the response to the new predictions data set, then check out the log messages in the JavaScript console of the browser after clicking the predict button. I've logged a comparison of the two objects there so that you can view the difference for yourself. All right, we then create this cross filter object using the predictions data set. We want our charts to be plotted by category, i.e. cats and dogs. So we define category as the cross filter dimension that we want to plot against. 
Next, using DC, we create our row chart within the row chart div we created earlier. And we specify which dimension to use for this particular chart by passing in the category object we just created to this dimension function. Then we specify what values we want plotted by calling this group function and specifying the prediction values from our predictions dataset. We then do everything the exact same for our pie chart and call dc.renderAll to render the charts. All right, and there you have it. That's how you can quickly add data visualizations to your application. This particular data visualization was pretty basic and you can do a lot more with DC and CrossFilter than what we showed here. If you're interested in learning more about data visualization in general using these libraries, then let me know in the comments and we might consider doing a series dedicated to data visualization in the future. See you in the next video.